Alex. Thanks, Roger. Hi, my name's Nick Josefowitz, and I'm running for District 2 Supervisor, which is uh, incorporates neighborhoods like Marina, Cal Hollow, Pack Heights, Presidio Heights, the Presidio, Seacliff, Russian Hill, Anza Vista. Just to get a sense, does anybody in the audience uh, live in my district, live in District 2? Okay, then I'll be quick. Um, thank you so much for coming. I live right next to Alta Plaza Park, if that's a park that any of you know with my wife and my twin boys. We're really excited to live there and to raise our kids there. they two and a half years old. They just had their first, uh, first day of preschool two weeks ago. Um, but we're also super frustrated that city government isn't doing a better job dealing with issues like property crime and street homelessness and how expensive it is to live here or how difficult it is to get around. Um, and we're just one of the wealthiest, most talented, most compassionate cities in the country, and we just have to do a better job. And that's ultimately why I'm running for supervisor. Um, and one of the ways that we can do a better job is by embracing, I would hesitate to say modern technology. I, I would just say technology because we don't need to, I think innovation is an overused word in government. Um, we just need to kind of be much more um, average, I would say, in how we, uh, how we use technology to kind of make our, our government work better. And I was just doing a ride along with the police department, for instance, um, on Thursday. And uh, they, uh, their, 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 their cars were so old that they carried a spare battery pack in the trunk um, because more often than not, when they stopped the car to respond to a call, it wouldn't start up again and they needed to jump it. Um, they recorded um, all the information from crime scenes um, by pen and paper. Um, and then when they, trans when they entered it into a computer, the computers were using Windows XP and they would just crash re regularly. Um, and when they did manage to get all the way through entering that information into the computer, the way that they would store it is they would burn it onto multiple CD-ROMs um, and store the CD-ROMs um, in kind of filing cabinets. And, you know, we, we have the highest property crime rate. Of, and I could just go on if you wanted to about the police department tech. Um, and, you know, we have one of the highest property, we, we have the highest property crime rate of any major city in the country. Um, and um, we spend over a billion dollars on our criminal justice system. Um, and we spend over $600 million on our police department. Then we have our sheriff who runs the jail and our probation departments and the courts and the DA. Like, it's just not good enough that we are still operating this criminal justice system in the dark ages. Um, and we could do so much more. We could use those resources so much more effectively. We could use them so much more effectively to prevent crime, to catch the folks who are the professional cr criminals who are committing so much of the crime, and then really getting so much smarter about how we're making sure that we're taking people um, who might otherwise spend their lives going in and out of jail and actually putting them through successful programs to get them back on track and get them some of the good jobs that we have here in San Francisco. But if I want to, our, our databases are so poor in our criminal justice system that we can't even answer a simple question. Like how many people who get released from jail in San Francisco and back up in jail within two years? It's a really simple question. Like how on earth can we manage to successfully reduce that number if we don't even track it in the first place? We can't even answer a simple question of how many people who commit an auto burglary and are arrested for it, and there were over 31,000 auto burglaries that were reported to SFPD last year, how many of those people and actually end up with any jail time? We can't even answer that question either. So I think you know my background is I started a company that built solar energy power plants, um, and I ran it for a decade. I'd be the only supervisor with any business experience. And I think what that's really taught me um, is that you just got to focus on this execution and you can't just focus on policy. And the reason that we have, that, that, our, that our criminal justice system um, is, um, is, is so late and has so poor at adopting best practices, is so late and so poor at adopting modern technology, is so late and so poor at holding at sort of collecting the data for which we can hold itself accountable which or we can hold it accountable and, and, and they can manage themselves better is not for lack of policy it's a lack of execution um, and so that's really the perspective that i would bring 
on the Board of Supervisors to these types of issues. Um, I know none of you live in my district, so it would probably be a bit weird if I asked you to vote for me. Um, but uh, I, uh, I would, um, I, I'm sure that you know folks who do live in my district, um, and, uh, and I'm happy to take questions um, and uh, take it from there. Yeah. Um, Ma'am. So, yeah, I believe it is the, I believe it is the same criminal that, would, that perpetrate the same crime. So that's why Marina has such high property crime. So are we too soft on crime? That's question number one. Second question is how are we going to solve housing crisis? Yeah, so you know, that in, in, in District 2, which is the district I'm running for that includes the marina, um, there were 3,781 auto burglaries reported to the police department last year, and the, the cops made 25 arrests. So, like, that's to that's just doesn't that that you're that that that's not good enough, right? Um, and uh, and it's not good enough that we're making so few arrests, and it's not good enough that there is so much or so many auto burglaries happen in our communities. Um, and it's it's not an inevitable consequence of being San Francisco. I mean, you look at other cities that have gone through an enormous amount of economic growth, where there's also a huge amount of economic disparity, like LA, and there's 10 times less auto burglaries in LA on a per capita basis than in San Francisco, right? Um, so so I think there's a lot that we can do to kind of improve that. And, and you know, we got to start with the fact that um, you know, we're arresting incredibly few people. In terms of the housing crisis, you know, I think there's there's no one solution to this, right? But I think what what we're seeing today is that for decades we um, we we've kind of gotten ourselves into a situation where we don't have enough homes that are affordable to working families, and we don't have enough homes who are affordable, which are affordable to seniors. And too many people feel like they're just one bad landlord away from getting out, from being put out on the streets. Um, and so a supervisor, I would work to really try and sort of reverse that. And that's what I've done for the past three years um, in, on the BART Board of Directors and other regional agencies on, on whose boards I sit, and really sort of find a way to build more housing that's affordable to working families and that's affordable to seniors. Um, and that's been a huge challenge in my neighborhood over the past 10 years. We've only built 45 new affordable homes in District 2. Um, that's a huge problem in the city of San Francisco, and that's a huge problem across the region. And as supervisor, I'd work to address it at all three scales. Hi. Sorry, yes, yes um, you did. So, how so, are you doing? Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Um, you were mentioning about the execution to get mm -hmm. things done. Um, my, my experience from seeing and talking to various people in the in the public offices is that there's a lot of finger pointing, you know, say, like, well, it can't be me, you know, someone else has to do this, and then they go, well, I do, yeah. they have to do this. How are you going to go in there and just, you know, make that, the, the buck stops here, and I'll take care of it? What, what is it that you're going to do that's going to make that happen? So I, 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 you know, it's, it would not be, um, I think what the, my experience um, doing this in other public agencies is that the reason that finger pointing is um, is so um, is is such a uh, that people get away with finger pointing um, is that there's no data to actually allow us to understand where the problem is and why things aren't getting done. And so if you know the the cops are very you know, feel like they can point the finger at the district attorney and say, well, like, it's the district attorney's fault. And the district attorney points it at the courts. And, you know, everybody's pointing at everybody else, but there's no data to actually kind of get to the bottom of, like, what is actually going wrong and where it's going wrong, how we compare to other cities and what we can do to, to kind of improve it. And so I think that at the very core of creating a well-functioning San Francisco city government is prioritizing the kind of collection and use of data um, around outcomes that matter. Um, and like any sort of well-functioning institution should, whether it's in government or in the nonprofit sector or in the private sector, we just got to get a lot more evidence-based. And I think that's going to allow us to kind of understand what's going wrong, intervene. On an individual level, it's going to allow managers to better manage their teams. Um, it's going to allow all of us to hold people accountable for actual sort of outcomes rather than just anecdotes. Yeah. Kevin, hi. Uh, 
you actually mentioned quite a number of pain points that you have. I'm a startup founder, and we might have a solution. So I'm wondering if, if a startup... Say that again. Well, you're, are you a startup founder? Yeah, I'm a startup founder. So if uh, there is a solution that could be interesting for you in the future, so is there a process how you engage startups in actually solving your pain points? Um, so that, I think one of the things that San Francisco city government has done really poorly is draw on all the talent that we have in our communities. And, you know, obviously tech talent is one of those talents, but we have just, you know, incredible here. We're sitting in, you know, kind of public health nirvana. Um, and we've done a terrible job of engaging folks in the public health community and the academic community on and on and on and on to help us kind of get to grips with these challenges. Um, one of the programs that I've worked on um, in the agencies that I'm on the board of now is a program called Civic Bridge, um, which is basically a non-profit which helps um, government agencies around the country identify um, problems which they think could really benefit from a kind of a startup's um, approach um, and which they think many agencies have. Um, and so that if a startup wanted to come in and help them solve that problem, it would then be a sort of a business model that they could have um, and which would apply to many, many different government agencies. Um, and, uh, and so I think Civic Bridge is, is, is one of the programs that we need to really scale up in San Francisco. It's kind of very underscale at the moment. Um, and then we just need to also really um, ultimately um, reform our procurement processes. Um, because if every government RFP comes out and it looks more like a sort of a procurement for a missile than it does for like a piece of software, um, and you have to go through a sort of a one and a half year process, you'll, you know, that's not going to work for startups. If you um, have to show that you have, you know, at least five other deployments of a similar size with similar agencies, that's not going to work for startups. Um, and so, you know, we just need to be a lot more um, aggressive about sort of understanding that you don't just sit there and, and wait for government contractors to come to you. You have to change how you do business as government to make sure that you're getting the best contractors coming to help you solve what are ultimately incredibly difficult problems. I feel that someone's kind of standing over my shoulder, so I should probably wrap up. Um, if any of you would like to help out in my campaign, um, the easiest way to do that um, is just to Google Picnic San Francisco. Um, my name's Nick, so pick Nick. Um, you'll find my website, um, and, uh, or you'll find me on Twitter, or you'll find me on Facebook, or LinkedIn, or Instagram, or Medium, or wherever you want to find me. Just let me know. We have a really simple digital canvassing tool, which will tell you which of your friends live in my district, um, and allow you to send individual messages to them. The last election was won by 258 votes. Um, in, like, even if you can reach out to 10 people who live in my district, it has a huge impact. Um, and, you know, it's only by kind of acting together that we'll really be able to change the status quo in this city and make sure that we can get to grips with the real problems we're facing. Thank you very much. We can chat later if you, you, you want to go. Nick will be out front. He wants to talk. So, I'd like you to discuss your bio-sector background. I think our city is very proud of the bio-sector background. Can you talk Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. What a wonderful way to end. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank Thanks you. a lot, Roger. Yeah.